Good evening. I want to thank you for joining me tonight to look at rule number three of the Red Sea rules. And rule number three is acknowledge your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. I want you to put yourself in the place of the Israelites. God has revealed his power to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians. And he's delivered the 10 plagues. And now Pharaoh has not only allowing them to leave, he's commanding them to leave. He wants them to get out and leave them alone. And so Israel is marching out triumphantly, excited about their future, going to the promised land, all the great things that God has for them. As they walk out, Pharaoh's in the background, and they think we're done with him forever. But the scripture says that Pharaoh changes his mind. Listen to what the scripture says in Exodus chapter 14, verses 5 through 9. That when word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds. What have we done letting all those Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best chariots, along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so he chased after the people of Israel who had left with fist raised in defiance. The Egyptians chased after them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all of his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore near Piharoth, across from Baal Zephon. How quickly things can change. How your circumstances just in the snap of fingers go from one way to another. You know, there's a quote in the book that Robert Morgan wrote from Charles Spurgeon. And Spurgeon said, The great tyrant has not forgotten you, and he designs your capture and your re-enslavement. Well, Spurgeon wasn't talking about the Pharaoh of Egypt. He's talking about our enemy, Satan, the devil. And that's why it's important that when problems come to our life, when difficulties occur, when our circumstances become challenging, that we acknowledge our enemy, but we keep our eyes upon the Lord. Because just like Spurgeon said, the devil has designs on our capture and our re-enslavement. You know, I love what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5, 8. He says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You know, that's one thing we need to get in our minds as Christians, that the devil is our enemy, and he has no designs at all for our good. Jesus warned, him, warned us about him in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief, which he's talking about, the devil or Satan, came to kill, steal, and destroy. You know, the devil has only one desire. He, he wants to, dis, to steal your joy. He wants to kill the hope you have in your life. He wants to destroy your life. And that means that we need to constantly be on guard against his attacks. And so when Dr. Morgan tells us that we need to acknowledge our enemy, what he's telling us to do is that we need to affirm in our mind. We need to think about that the devil really exists. He's a powerful being, and he wants to destroy your life. And there's no greater time for him to attack as when we're having problems or difficulties or challenging circumstances in our lives. You know, I think one of the reasons that many Christians kind of short sell Satan, if, if they do, is, is they think of Satan as being this tiny man in a red suit, has horns protruding from his head, and he carries his pitchfork, and he has a, a red tail. But I can guarantee you, the devil will never appear like that. You know, Paul even talks about this in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it's no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. And, and so he reminds us that the devil not only can appear as something good, but his servants, his demons, and, and the people that he works through on this earth are his servants also, and, and they can be disguised as uh, servants of righteousness. And so many times the devil, when he appears to us, he'll appear as something or, or someone good. You know, the devil can even make himself appear as a Christian. He can work in the, in the hearts and minds of people, and they can portray and pass himself off as believers. Because the devil, he's got this philosophy that he wants to look good to you. He wants to sound truthful, and he wants to appear loving. All the things that God is. And so he betrays himself as God in order to gain your trust 
and so they were more likely to, to listen to him. And so how does he do? How does that look like? Well, he appears as a good solution. He appears as someone who comes into your life, and although this advice they're giving you really isn't scriptural, it doesn't uh, go along with what God says, what God's will and plan is for your life, but it sounds good because they're offering you a way out of your problem or maybe a, a solution to your difficulty or a way to get around your challenging circumstances. You know, that's why he's never going to appear as this man in a red suit with a horns out of his head, a pitchfork in his hand, and a tail sticking out behind him because you would instantly identify him as that. He appears as someone good. He appears as someone maybe that has a good solution to your problem and it gives you a way out. And so that's why when problems come into our life, we need to acknowledge our enemy, but we need to keep our eyes upon the Lord because really what might appear to be a solution to your problem or a good alternative in your time of distress really could just be Satan trying to deceive you into making a bad decision or making the wrong choice. And so when difficulties come to your life, when struggles occur, when challenging circumstances uh, start happening, I think sometimes we have a tendency to let our guard down and, and we focus on our problem and the way out instead of keeping our eyes up on the Lord. You know, you've probably heard the old saying, it's like a shark smelling blood in the water. You know, when a shark smells blood in the water, it, it knows that there's something out there that's been wounded, it's been hurt. It's probably a food source for him is what he's thinking. And he can attack because with that other fish being wounded and, and hurting, it, it can't fight back. It has it can't escape like it normally would. And so the sharks take advantage of it. The devil's the same way. When he smells that blood in the water, when those problems and struggles and difficult circumstances come into our life, he realizes that and he knows that that's the most opportunity most opportune time for him to attack us and to, to cause us to get our eyes off God and, and follow his lies and, and the false advice he throws out there. You know, I think that's the thing that he does most effectively. He, he whispers lies in our ears. He fills our minds with great falsehoods. You know, I've, uh, it's not unusual for a, an army to spread false information. I mean, it's been done probably in every war that's ever been fought that one side will put out false information about where the troops are being stationed or where the next attack is going to occur. And they do that to get their enemies focused somewhere else than where it should be. And that's what the devil likes to do when problems come to our lives. He likes to come in and starts whispering these lies and this false information. So we start focusing on places that really our attention doesn't need to be on. And what we're so guilty of doing so many times when that happens, we take our eyes off the Lord and what his plan and purpose and will is for our lives, and we start focusing on ourselves and start looking for a way to get out of our problems and, and to ease our pain and our suffering. That's why it's so important that we remember what Jesus said about the devil in John chapter 8, verse 44. Jesus said that the devil has always hated the truth because there's no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character, for he's a liar and the father of lies. You know, when Jesus said that there's no truth in Satan, what he's telling us is that the devil or Satan is incapable of telling the truth. Everything the devil tells you is a lie and it's something that we need to ignore. Because remember, what the devil's desire is for your life, he wants to steal your hope, he wants to kill your joy, and he wants to destroy your life. And so I guess the big question that we need to talk about tonight is, well, how can we discern what is God's will is for our life and, and the lies of Satan? What's the, the true light that God's trying to reveal to us as opposed to the counterfeit light that the devil is trying to shine in our path? It all comes down to the rule. Acknowledge your enemy, but keep your eyes on the Lord. And so how do we keep our eyes upon the Lord? Well, it's by keeping your eyes upon the Bible. It's by keeping your eyes on on God's Word. It's about reading the Bible, studying the Bible, coming together and, and, uh, like we are tonight and, and talking about the Word of God and how it applies to our lives. And that's one reason why reading the Bible daily is, is so important as we engage in spiritual warfare. Every one of us as believers engage in spiritual warfare because the devil, he's our enemy. He's always going to be looking for a way to attack us and destroy our lives. And, and that's why we need to be ready. 
You know, I, I encourage people to read the Bible through in a year. And, and that's really not that big a, a challenge because all you need to do is set aside about 10 to 15 minutes a day and, and have that word in your head and be thinking about it so that when Satan starts speaking to you and telling these lies, you'll be able to pick his words out as being counterfeit and not in line to God's word. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, Paul writes, Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. I'm not going to take time to read all those verses, but in the following verses, Paul lists five things that Christians should put on in order to defend themselves from Satan's attack. He tells us to put on the belt of truth. He tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. He tells us to cover or shod our feet with the peace of the gospel. And he tells us to pick up our shield of faith. You know, one thing those five things all have in common, they're all for protection. They're the de defensive armor to protect us against the devil's attack. But he closes this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, by telling us, take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So what's Paul telling us? That you need to be defensive. You need to protect yourself from his attack, but don't just cower down. Don't just endure an attack. Fight back. Pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And you pick that up by picking up every day and reading it and allowing God to speak to your heart through it and applying these truths to your life. But it's even more important to put on the full armor of God and to pick up our the sword of the Spirit when we're wounded. When we have problems come into our life, when struggles appear, when our circumstances become very challenging, because when that happens, the devil smells that blood in the water and he's going to attack, and we need to be ready. You know, the words of God in the Bible had great power. You know, but we read in the book of Genesis that, that God spoke the world into existence. His word has great power. You look in the New Testament, and, and Jesus just spoke the words, be healed, and, and people were healed. You know, the word of God had power in the Old Testament, the word of God had power in the New Testament, and the word of God has power today in our lives. And so we need to be reading it. We need to know it. And we need to use it as our weapon. Because when we expose ourselves to God's word, the lies that Satan will tell you, that they will whisper in your ear, they become more apparent. And we realize they're not the truth. And we'll realize that the only reason that he's putting these thoughts into our mind is because he's trying to destroy our lives. So I just want to encourage you. When, when problems arise, when difficulties come, when challenging circumstances uh, appear in your life, acknowledge the devil or Satan as your enemy. Understand that he's trying to steal your joy, kill your hope, and destroy your life. But keep your eyes on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Focus on his word, and he'll provide the victory, and he'll provide a way out. So let me close tonight with a word of prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for this time. And God, just uh, continue to reveal yourself to us. And Father, I pray you just guide us to, to be in your word, to study your word, knowing that we have an enemy that's trying to destroy us. And so the next time the problems come to our life, God, help us to acknowledge Satan as a powerful enemy. But God, help us to remember that he's not as powerful as you, that you're a great and awesome God, and that you've given us your word, you've given us your the Bible to give us directions and as a map to as a way of escape. Father, we just praise you for being a great and mighty God, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to remind you that uh, next week is Easter, and we're going to be taking the week off, but we'll be coming back uh, the following week to look at the next Red Sea rule. So just want to remind you one more time, be strong in the Lord and the power is might, and whether it's here, whether it's there, it's in there. God bless, and we'll see you soon.